Now then, people, welcome back to the Just Your Football Show. It is Tuesday, the 27th of September, and it's time for another Leeds United update. And boy, am I excited about this one, man. <laughs> Let's have it! <laughs> We're going to be talking, of course, about Christian Pulisic and a link to Leeds United, and we may well just be in for some cash windfall that would help secure that deal as well. So as is always the case, please do smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, get your comments in, and let's get into it. I don't think I do it. Oh, Arsenal started no, like house on fire. We do it if Signing could, number two for this new era. It's judgment day, people. Yeah! yeah! What did your boy tell you? It was never in doubt. Never in Yes, of course, we're going to be talking about another American boy, this one being Christian Pulisic, because it's been reported on the continent that Chelsea are willing to accept an offer for Christian Pulisic in the region, believed to be around about £32 million. And Leeds United are one of the clubs mentioned in the report. The 24-year-old winger, of course, struggling for game time at Stamford Bridge, hasn't really gone well for him. We know Jesse loves him. We already have plenty of Americans. We already are, man, Team America. You know what I'm saying? Um, so for me, this one really, really, really excites me. I can't lie to you. Like, I would love, absolutely love Christian Pulisic to come into Leeds United. It would just complete the trio, complete the set, completed it, mate. America completed it, mate. Do you know what I mean? I've said on previous videos, I see this deal happening. Now, of course, massive win wages, transfer fees, maybe it's a little bit tongue-in-cheek. And listen, apparently Juventus, former club Dortmund, Newcastle are all linked with him and, and probably could afford to pay more for him in terms of, you know, wages, etc., but that American little swing could have a big thing to say. Pulisic had a rough time at Chelsea. Maybe he just wants to go and enjoy his football again. So for me, if we can get that done genuinely, I'm salivating at that fact. Make it happen, Rads. Make it happen. And that's going to move us on nicely to Rad Razzani. Now, Andrea Rad Razzani has agreed a deal with Dazone, Eddie Holmes Dazone. Um, he has agreed to sell the 11 sports company to Dazone and join Dazone on the board as a director as part of that deal. Um, now, of course, there are no figures and we're only just hearing this. So we're not actually sure of how much Dazone have actually paid for uh, 11 sports. But one thing's for certain is that Rad Razzani will be due a cash windfall following the acquisition. So surely... Come January, he may be willing to inject some cash in. Let's hope that is the case, because there are players out there that could improve us, not least Christian Pulisic. And staying with the uh, Americans, we are going to talk briefly about Tyler Adams. He was on the Men in Blazers podcast just the other day. Big shout out to the Men in Blazers. Gave me a little push across their social media for some of the content I did, so big up to them. Subscribers to the channel as well, so if they're watching... Hello. Um, basically, Tyler Adams did an, e uh, an interview with them and was just speaking about the current crop and how good the squad is. He said there are no egos. He said the guys come in with a mentality. They want to improve. They don't come in and complain about what the coach says. They just get down to business. It starts from the top, right from the ownership, through the technical staff, through the physios, through everything. There is no entitlement within this squad. And that's really, really good to hear. We know we have a great group. There are so many squads across the Premier League that have many, many bad apples. You just have to look across the Pennines and the shit show that happened there for such a long time. Okay, it looks like they might be turning the corner now, unfortunately for us. Um, but we have a good group and we don't want players to come in and upset that. Maybe that's why we never really 
pursue Noah Lang right to the point of where we nearly had a deal done for him. Um, staying on the international stage as well, we are going to talk about Willie and Yonto. Big shout out to Willie and Yonto. He started for Italy last night in their decider against Hungary. Third start before his 19th birthday, which, as I said to you yesterday, he would break the record. He is the first attacker to do that in the history of the Italian national side. And he played well, and he played 66 minutes and was heavily involved in Italy's first goal. Um, so big up to him. Now, in Italy, they weren't as glowing about him. Like, don't shoot the messenger. I got this from my man, uh, James Marshman, over in Gazetta. They said he was bad with the ball, never in position. Uh, some said struggled to find positions, loses too many balls, real stranger in the game. So over in Italy, where they are a little bit harsher, I think everyone's media is right. But for me, he was involved in the goal and he's 18-year-old and he's playing on the international stage for the European champions. So listen, William Yonto um, is close to that first team. Whether or not he'll be ready, we shall see. Because of course, the under-21s head to York on Friday night as they host Stoke City in the Premier League 2 Division 2 class. Leeds are currently top of the table, picked up 13 points from their opening five games. Um, I think they now have like a bit very busy period, like five games in just over three weeks. Um, so hopefully they'll get back off to a winning start. I'm expecting an instant return to the top flight, which then continues as being able to bring in players like William Yonto, Sonny Perkins, who's playing for England at one o'clock today. Um, you know, Greenwood, Gelha, all these sort of players. The future's bright. The future is Leeds, of course. I've still not watched Academy Dreams. I will watch that and I will put up a review of that show on the channel. Now, that's it for the international stuff and the under-21 stuff. Let's get down to brass tacks. Now, the international football done. Leeds United will play eight games between now and the start of the World Cup in November. Them eight games are this. Villa at home, Palace away. Arsenal at home, Leicester City away, Fulham at home, Liverpool away, Bournemouth at home, and then Spurs away before we jet off to the World Cup. Now, I've crunched the numbers and looked at it, and this is what I believe we could get. And it is, of course, very much on the positive side. But out of them eight games, I'm looking at 13 points. I think we get wins at home um, against Villa, against Fulham, against Bournemouth. I don't think we'll beat Arsenal, just because we never do, and they're absolutely in scintillating form. I've said we might get a point away at Palace, and I think we get all three away at Leicester, provided Brendan Rodgers is still in there because it's current shit show right now. But if anyone's going to give them points, it probably will be us. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments. How many points will Leeds get between now and when the World Cup starts in November? Just them games again. Villa, Palace, Arsenal, Leicester City, Fulham, Liverpool, Bournemouth and Spurs. But of course, all eyes are on Sunday in that game against Aston Villa at home. And the referee has been announced for that game. It is Stuart Atwell. And Stuart Atwell was the manager that was in charge of that famous game at Ellen Road, which uh, where the uh, melee ensued and Janssen had to put the goal, but you know, ball in the net, etc. And we let them score a goal. And um, for me as a fan, as a match going fan on that day, genuinely, it was absolutely amazing. The roof went off when we scored that goal when Clicky did some shit out. So Ian Roberts took it on. I loved it. I was disappointed we let them score. If I could have been Pontus in that moment, I definitely would have done what he did. But look what it did. It cost him his time at Leeds United. But listen, they were very, very good memories. And that moves me on nicely to the manager, my hero, the God, the Messiah that was in charge of us at that time. Marcelo Bielsa apparently has turned down the chance to step back into management with Brazilian club Santos. Listen, for me, when the World Cup's done, Gareth Southgate will move on. Just do the biz and go get Marcelo Bielsa. And just while we're on the man as well, just to finish up on, I don't know if you had a chance to see this, but Maxi Rodriguez, formerly of Liverpool, of course, and of Newell's, was spotted in Headingley at the Marcelo Bielsa mural with, of course, his Newell shirt as well. That just shows how much of an impact this man had. Um, and that's amazing, the fact that, Someone as, as 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 well esteemed as Maxi Rodriguez is in Leeds going to see that mural. It's pretty pretty special, isn't it? Really, if we're being totally honest. But listen, that's it for your latest Leeds United roundup on the Daily Leeds on the Just Joe Football Show. Please do smash a like on the content, subscribe to the channel, get your comments in, hit that notification bell. We are another day closer to Premier League football returning. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you in a bit. Peace out. Leeds.